In this video, we continue our discussion of acid-base strengths. So we've gotten an introduction so far, particularly discussing our acids. And with our acids, we talked about that we had six and only six strong acids, and we need to know those six strong acids. And if something's not one of those six strong acids, it's weak. Now, we can describe something as strong, and we can describe something as weak, um, Amongst those weak materials, some will still be stronger than others, and that's going to depend on our molecular structure. So we talked about that materials that had weaker bonds, as well as materials that had more polar bonds, those were going to lead to that being our stronger acids, because those bonds broke more easily, giving us greater dissociation. So we're going to look at some different types of acids and look at how to compare their strengths. So one of our simplest types of acids is having a hydrogen bonded to a single nonmetal. So to be acidic, a molecule must contain a partially positive hydrogen. So we have to have a hydrogen to donate, and it has to be a polar hydrogen. It's got to be partially positive. So again, this requires polar bonds. Remember that in a polar bond, the more electronegative atom is pulling the electrons towards itself and away from the hydrogen. This leaves our hydrogen electron poor and therefore able to accept electrons, resulting in electron transfer and proton transfer. Now, when we talk about hydrogen bonded to a simple nonmetal, we can describe these as being binary acids. In terms of our binary acids, the strength depends on the bond strength. And that bond strength is related to the size and the length of our bonds. Smaller atoms have shorter bonds. Smaller atoms, the nuclei, are going to be closer together when those orbitals overlap and form our bonds. And therefore, they're going to have shorter bonds. Shorter bonds are going to be, more, are going to be stronger because the electrons that are attracted to the nucleus of the other atom are going to be closer to one another and they're going to be held more tightly. So, shorter bonds are stronger bonds. Now, in order to judge acid strength with our binary acids, we've got to look at bond strength, which is connected to atom size. And so, looking at atom size, we've got to go back to our periodic trends. Remember, the periodic trend for atomic radii is that as we go down a group, the atom size increases. As the atom gets larger, the bond length gets larger, and therefore, the strength decreases. So we can take a look at an example of comparing some binary acids. We've got HF, HCl, HBr, HI. Again, they're binary because they contain two atoms, hydrogen bonded to one other non-metal. Now, if we look at these, The non-metal hydrogen is bonded to, so fluorine, chlorine, bromine, they are all in the same group in the periodic table. With fluorine starting at the top, Chlorines below it, then bromine, and then our HI. So these are all in the same group. Now remember our trend as we go down a group in the periodic table. As we go down the group, atom size increases. So, my fluorine is going to be the smallest atom. My iodide will be the largest. We said smaller atoms were going to have shorter bond lengths. My larger atoms are going to have larger or longer bond lengths. So as we go down that group and the atoms get larger, the bond lengths get larger.
as we said that in terms of bond lengths, that shorter bonds are going to be stronger bonds. So my HF being the smallest, having the shortest bonds, the hydrogen and fluorine are going to be pretty close to each other when their orbitals overlap. That's going to lead to strong bonds. As the atoms get larger, the bond lengths increase. The nuclei and electrons get further apart. The bonds weaken. So the HI will have the weakest bonds. So how this impacts strength is that, again, strongest bonds, so these are opposites now. The stronger the bond, the harder it is to break, the less it breaks apart, the less dissociation we get. So that's going to make my HF the weakest atom or, bond, or acid. The HI will be the strongest. So in ranking these, HF is the weakest, HCl is stronger than HF, HBr is stronger than HCl, and HI is stronger than the HBr. Now, these three are all in our list of six strong acids. So they all completely dissociate. Some might be a little bit easier than others, but they all completely dissociate. HF is considered a weak acid. And it's weak, even though it's a very polar bond, it's weak because of that very, very short bond length. And that very, very short bond length leads to strong bonds, even though these are very polar bonds. So these are our binary acids. When we're looking at the binary acids, we're focusing where the strength depends predominantly on the bond lengths. The shorter the bond, the harder it is to break, the weaker that acid will be. So our stronger acids are one with long bond lengths, weak bonds, so they break apart easily. Now our next type of Acids that we can encounter are polyatomic acids. So binary had just two atoms. Polyatomic, we're looking at ones with more than two atoms. And so we're looking at hydrogens bonded to groups of nonmetals, potentially. Different nonmetals will have different electronegativities. The greater the electronegativity of the nonmetal, the more polar the bond will be. The more polar the bond, the stronger the acid. So when we're dealing with more than two atoms, this is where our polarity is going to take a bigger role. And so <clears throat> we've got to recall our trends in electronegativity so that we can compare bond polarities. So we did this much earlier in the semester, so we've got to bring that back in. Electronegativity trends, remember electronegativity increases across a row, it decreases down a group. More polar bonds lead to more polar molecules. The greater the molecule polarity, the stronger our acid will be. So we're going to compare a series of molecules. On our worksheets, looking at comparing water, CH4, HF, and NH3. For each of these molecules, we're asked to first of all draw our dot structure, identify if our bonds are polar, or any of our dipoles, and identify if we have an acidic hydrogen. So we'll go ahead and draw our dot structures.
So if we take a look at our water molecule, so next we're looking at if our bonds are polar. So in my water molecule, I have oxygen-hydrogen bonds. These are bonds between different nonmetals. They're going to be polar. So if we've got polar bonds, we're asked to draw our dipoles. So along these bonds, oxygen is more electronegative, so it'll be partially negative. Hydrogen will be partially positive. So looking at this, I have partially positive hydrogens. If I have partially positive hydrogens, then I have acidic hydrogens. Which means I have the potential to lose those hydrogens or donate those hydrogens. Now next we've got our CH4 molecule. <clears throat> We're looking at bonds between carbon and hydrogen. That's my only types of bonds here. We've got to remember that carbon-hydrogen bonds are nonpolar. So if they're nonpolar, there are no dipoles. If there are no dipoles, there are no partial positive hydrogens. If I don't have any partial hydrogens, then there are no acidic hydrogens. So this CH4, even though it has hydrogens, because the hydrogens are nonpolar, it can't donate them. These bonds are not going to be easily broken. That CH4 is not going to dissociate in water. Now next we have HF. That HF bond is polar. The fluorine is more electronegative, so the fluorine is partially negative. The hydrogen is partially positive, giving me a dipole and I have an acidic hydrogen. As long as I have a partial positive hydrogen, I have an acidic hydrogen, which means, again, I have the potential to donate. And then finally, NH3. I'm looking at nitrogen-hydrogen bonds. Again, those are bonds between different atoms other than carbon-hydrogen, so it's nonpolar. or sorry, polar. The nitrogen is negative. Each of my hydrogens are positive. So I have three partially positive hydrogens. This is, or it has, acidic hydrogens. So I've got four molecules here. Three of these molecules have partially positive hydrogens that have the potential to donate hydrogens. Now next we want to look at comparing these molecules and identify which of them would be stronger acids. So which ones are more likely to be able to donate hydrogens than the others. And so three of them have polar bonds. And the strength of the acid depends on the bond polarity. To determine the ranking of polarity, we've got to look at our electronegativities. And so we're looking at comparing the center atoms, oxygen, carbon, fluorine, nitrogen. If we rank those, carbon is the least electronegative, followed by nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. So in terms of our bond polarities, that means that the carbon-hydrogen bond, which we already know is nonpolar, is going to be my least polar, followed by nitrogen-hydrogen, oxygen-hydrogen, and the fluorine-hydrogen. So the molecule with the more polar bonds will be the stronger acid. So when we go to rank these, my nonpolar molecule that has no acidic hydrogens is going to be my 
least acidic. It is non-acidic. Followed by my NH3, my H2O, and my HF. So HF is the most acidic, which means it is the, out of this grouping, it's the strongest acid. Now, HF is a weak acid. It's only going to have partial dissociation. We're comparing it to other weak acids here. Now, out of this listing, HF we would look at and identify as an acid. It's got a hydrogen we can donate. We've talked about water being amphoteric. Water can behave as both an acid and a base because it's got the lone pairs of electrons that we can use to accept hydrogens, and we have acidic hydrogens that we can donate. Now, in this listing here, we also said that the ammonia has acidic hydrogens. But most of the time when we talk about ammonia, we talk about it being a base, and that's typically because we're talking about its behavior in water. Now, we said before, with strength, it's all about competition. If I'm looking at comparing NH3 and water, NH3 is a weaker acid than water. And so, since if I put these two together, since water is the stronger acid, it is going to be able to donate the hydrogens better than the ammonia does. That's why when we talk about ammonia, even though it has acidic hydrogens, we don't talk about it being acidic because we're talking about typically the interaction in water and it's a weaker acid than the water is. And therefore it's not going to be the acid in that scenario. So we've talked about binary acids, we've talked about polyatomic molecules. The final type of acid that we can encounter are our oxo acids, or sometimes they're referred to as oxy acids. These are acids in which hydrogen is attached to a nonmetal bonded to oxygen. So we've got this general format, H-N-Y-O-M. So hydrogen, some nonmetal that's not oxygen, and then some number of oxygen. The strength of these acids depends on the electronegativity of the nonmetal Y and the number of oxygens. The more electronegative Y is, the more polar the YOH bond is, the more polar, the more acidic. The more oxygens we have attached to Y, additionally more acidic. And that is because of, <clears throat> again, that same thing. It's making that bond to hydrogen more polar, which is making it more acidic, or it can dissociate better. So we can look at some examples of ranking some oxy acids. So if we look at question A, we've got H2SO4, H2TEO4, and H2SEO4. So if we look at these, they all have the same number of oxygen. So that means what's going to determine their strength is the electronegativity of Y. So the Y would be the S, the TE, and the SE. Now these atoms are all in the same group in our periodic table. And remember our trends is that as we go down a group, electronegativity decreases. So in terms of our electronegativity, the least electronegative is going to be my TE, then my SE, and then my S. So we said in terms of strength, the greater the electronegativity on the Y, the stronger the acid. So when we rate these acids, H2TEO4 will be the weakest, 
followed by the H2 SEO4, with the strongest being the H2 SO4. Our H2SO4 is one of our strong acids. And so hopefully we would recognize that as being our strong acid. But again, it's got the strongest electronegativity on the sulfur. So that in turn is going to make our bonds more polar and therefore the hydrogen more easily lost. Now, if we look at part B, we've got HClO4, HClO2, HClO, and HClO3. They all have the same Y. So what we're going to look at here is the number of oxygen. We said that as the number of oxygens increases, the strength increases. So the least oxygen, the HClO, will be my weakest acid. And then as we add more oxygen, the strength increases. So that our HClO4 will be our strongest. So if we take a look at our final problem, we're asked to arrange each of the following in order of increasing acid strength and to explain our reasoning. So if we look at A, we've got HCl, H2S, pH3. So we're looking at comparing um, some polyatomic, with the exception of the HCl, but some polyatomic atoms. And we said in those cases, it depends on polarity. So we're gonna rank these based on polarity. If I look at the chlorine, the sulfur, the phosphorus, they are all in the same row of my periodic table. And my trend is that as I go across that row, my electronegativity increases and therefore my polarity increases. So my phosphorus is further to the left in the periodic table, making it the least electronegative. And then my H2S, and then my HCl. So the chlorine is the most electronegative out of these, so it's going to have the more polar bond, which will be more easily broken. Next, we've got NH3, PH3, and ASH3. So again, we're dealing with some polyatomic molecules. We're going to look again at ranking based on polarity, looking at comparing the nitrogen, phosphorus, and arsenic. These are all in the same group. So our trend as we go down the group, electronegativity decreases. So the bottom of my group is the AS. So it's going to be the least electronegative and therefore the weakest acid. Then we have our pH3 and then we have our NH3. And then finally C, we've got HBRO, HBRO3, and HBRO4. Here we're dealing with those oxo acids. So with the oxo acids, we're looking at Y, or we're looking at the number of oxygen, or a combination of both. These all have the same Y, so it just depends on the oxygen. As my oxygen increases, my strength increases. So the HBROO is the weakest. The HBRO4 is the strongest. So, so far we've been talking about acid strengths. We had six and only six strong acids. All others are weak. If we have a partial positive hydrogen, we have the potential to be an acid. Whether it behaves as an acid, it's gonna depend on what it's interacting with and who's stronger. And so again, we can judge that strength by looking at polarities and bond strengths. Now, in our next video, we're gonna take a look at bases and ranking base strength.